good schools how can we distinguish which are good schools and which are bad schools there would be some distinction between the two several teaching practices distinguish good from poor schools the least example would be again of the language use that is being done so the language use in the good school would be always a careful conversation by the teachers and the students which has good features and polite features to be used in the language above all good schools have less multi grade teaching so that is one thing and one concern the government needs to look at because that is bringing more problems in teaching and learning prospects of students because of too much load on the teachers and the multi grade system where the teachers are overloaded with work and they are given more grades to be teaching and sometimes supervising more than one class at the same time so the result of this type of teaching becomes always negligible and the students are not learning anything in those classes and when their teachers are responsible for several grades so sometimes more classes are given to the teachers and sometimes more than one class is given to the teacher to look after while she is teaching one class so what happens then they are less likely than those in poor schools to use mo student monitors so what is happening that in the poor schools the student monitors are also sometimes not available and if they are available what happens is that they are not guided and given some instruction to continue with the task that means even the task is not given to the student monitors or the group leaders if the group leaders have a good understanding of the task that is based on learning that means that the the instructions would be clear to the group leader and the group leader knows how to continue with the activity and he also understands what are the objectives of that activity so that means in a way he is well equipped and prepared for the task that activity can result in better learning but in some cases in the schools where there are no monitors available and if the monitors are available they are not guided by the teachers they are not told what they are supposed to do and so only the supervision or some recitation done by the student is supposed to be keeping all the students busy so the students are not busy at that time when there is no task based learning taking place the students are aware that it is just something casual and during that casual activity the conversation which can take place between the students and the monitors can also be very careless conversation and in that way the students are going to learn negative things so that means in most of the cases in the poor schools even where there are monitors and where there are no monitors the number of students who are not being taught by the teacher but the teacher is supposed to have them during that time when she is teaching another class all the learning that is taking place is zero or rather negative learning because they are getting a time to learn something which is not useful and this will give an image of poor schools when some activities in schools is being just neglected and the teacher is also obsessed with doing something in the class and they she just asks the monitor to do anything that he wants to do and the monitor is not controlled and he is not even informed of what activity is to be taken place and so in good schools it will be taken care of that the teacher is not overloaded with multi grade teaching also she is not asked to teach more than one class at the same time because if she is using monitors without any instructions and without giving a task that will be a very poor show and the students learning will not take place at all so that would be one distinction in a good school that the teachers are not overloaded the workload is balanced and the teachers can do good work during taking their classes which are not overloaded and they do not have responsibility of other classes at the same time while they are teaching one class